Hello, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisStock.com, and in this brief DNN training video, I'm going to show you how you can utilize my MVC template to create a module within your DNN environment, and then how to actually debug that module. So, the video assumes a couple of things. You should have a, a local instance of .NET Nuke running at dnndev.me. And you should also have installed my templates available within the Visual Studio Online Gallery or in the DNN Store. Now, these templates are for Visual Studio 2015. If you need older versions, you can grab those from CodePlex. So I already have DNN installed sites up and running here. I also have the templates installed. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project here utilizing the newly released MVC template. So I'm going to click on New Project in Visual Studio 2015. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before I started Visual Studio 2015, in order to debug, we're going to want to run the project, or run Visual Studio in administrator mode. Now, if you've got the shortcut on your toolbar here, or quick launch bar in Windows, you can right-click on that, right-click on the Visual Studio 2015 option, choose Properties. From here, you can go into the shortcut and then advanced option and check the run as administrator option. That's important if you actually want to debug. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is create our MVC module. So I'm going to use the .NET Nuke C Sharp DAO 2 MVC project template. And I'm going to create the module. So we're going to call this task list. Now where we create that module is important. My DNN site is running out of the C website's dnndev.me folder. So the module needs to go into desktop modules. And because it's an MVC module, it needs to go in a folder called MVC. Now we're going to make sure that the create directory for solution option is unchecked. Then we're going to click OK. That will go through and allow Visual Studio to start the creation of our new module project. Now, when the project opens for the first time, you'll find that it opens some very basic documentation. You can find that in the documentation folder. I'm simply going to close that. And if we go over here into the project, we can see all of the various files that come in part of this project. Now, for the MVC project, you'll find that there are no ASCX files like you would find in a normal a web forms DNN module. So you don't have ASCX files. What you have are views. And within the views, we've got an item, a settings, and a shared folder. And now inside of there, we have .cshtml files for Razor files. In a future video, we'll talk more, more detail about the actual functionality within this particular module in the project. But for now, we just want to go through the process of making sure that we can build, we can install, and we can debug this project. So first thing we'll do, just because we just created the project, is we'll go to the build option and press build. And what we should see is it will go through the process of doing a build and we get build succeeded listed at the bottom. Now, if we were to build this in release mode by choosing from the dropdown list and then do a build, this will actually create the installable files that we need to utilize this module on our DNN website. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is go back to our website. And because we just built the project, we built the files, it created new DLLs. So the DNN website is going to take a moment to load for the first time. Once that load comes back, we're simply going to log into the website as a host or a super user account. So that because we just created this module for the first time, we're going to log in as that host user, and then we're going to navigate to the host extensions page. This will allow us to install the project, install the module within DNN itself so that we can place the module on a page. So we're going to navigate to host extensions. We're then going to choose the install extension wizard option. We're going to choose from the file options there. And we're going to navigate to our desktop modules MVC folder. We can see we have a task list folder here. And inside of that folder, we have an install folder. Now from there, we can either install the install zip or the source zip. We're going to go ahead and just use the install zip. 
we are taking a module that we just packaged and we're going to install it right over the project that we created. It's not going to cause us any problems because we have not made any changes to that project since we performed the package. So we're going to go ahead and click on next, step through the packaging or the installation process here, and then complete that process. So it'll take a moment while DNN recycles because once again, we've modified the DLLs in the bin folder during this installation process. It'll take a moment for the site to come back. Now, if we switch back to Visual Studio while we're waiting for that, we can see we still have all of our files here within Visual Studio. So now that we have the module installed, let's go ahead and do some of the basics that we need to to test this module out and then debug. We're going to go to the pages menu. We're going to choose add new page and we're going to create a page called task list. Now you don't have to create a page for every module you develop. I just find it easy to do and that allows me to go through and then really test out my modules, know where they are in my development environment. Now in this case, I'm going to create a page called task list and I'm going to make sure that I choose the page template of none specified. This will create a new page without any modules on it. Now it does change skins when I go to this page because I've made some changes to the site settings for this particular install of this development environment, but you don't have to worry about the look and feel of the skin at this point. So now that we have the page created, let's go ahead and add the module to the page. We're going to go to the modules menu in the control panel. We're going to choose add new module. And if we simply type the word task, we get the task list option there. I'm going to drop that module into the page. And we now have our module created here and available to us. From there, we can add a new item within the menu. But before we actually do that, let's go ahead and switch back over here and talk about how we can now debug that module so that we can see this particular module work and see how it functions. So within the MVC template, we have an item controller and we have a settings controller. Now, the item controller provides the methods for delete, edit, and the ability to essentially create the list or the index for our items. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is set a couple of breakpoints within here just so we can see what happens when we try to do something here within our module. Now, in order to debug within Visual Studio utilizing my project templates, I find the easiest way to do that is to switch back into debug mode. Now, because we did most recently did a release build and we have not made any code changes, I'm going to choose the build option, choose clean solution, and then I'm going to choose build again and then choose build solution. This just ensures that Visual Studio will build DLLs in with the debug symbols for our module. If we were to go back over here to our website and refresh the page, once again, the page takes a moment to load. Now, in order to debug, we need to perform an additional action here. And what we're going to do is attach to the debugger or to the, the IIS process in order to debug. So the way I prefer to do that is to press Control Alt P. This brings up the attach to process window. Now by default, when you load that window, the show processes from all users option will be unchecked. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. And then first thing I can do is click in that window anywhere and simply type W. That will take us down to the W options in that list. And we're looking for the w3wp.exe file. That is our IIS worker process. If we go ahead and click attach, click attach again on the window that pops up. It'll take a moment while the attach occurs. And now we have attached to our module and to our website so that we can debug this module. So if we navigate back over here to our DNN development environment and we refresh the page, what you'll see is we immediately hit the breakpoint that I set on this action result index. Now this was the index view within the MVC module. So what it's gonna do now is it's gonna allow us to go through and, and step into the process here that will go through and, and allow us to debug the module. So first thing we're going to do is step into the get items method. So 
when that gets called, it passes in a module ID of 425, and we can now step through the process here and attempt to debug our module, see if we have any particular issues. Now, at this point, we don't have any items created within our module, so stepping through isn't really gonna tell us too much. But if we go in and try to add a new item now, this will allow us to start to debug the process for editing an item. So what we see is when I had reset or I had set a breakpoint on the action result edit option, when item ID is negative one, and we hit that breakpoint as soon as I click on the add new item. So we can now step into here and we can see that the project is gonna go through and load up the basic functionality for the edit interface. Now from here, we can go ahead and create our item And I think we can save even though we don't have any users listed here. If we go ahead and click on save, we now hit the breakpoint for the edit item action. Now item ID is not one, negative one, so we don't hit the initial uh, edit method. We hit this one down below, which allows us here to come in and step into the process. It's going to go through and create some of the basic information for that item and click it'll create that item uh, utilizing the create method on item manager if you go ahead and hit f5 the debugger will continue it once again hits the index breakpoint i'll hit f5 again and one more time just for good measure and then the page will load so we are still in debug mode but we hit f5 to let the execution complete so the page loads fully so we can now if we need to perform other actions, we can very easily debug. Now, what I would typically do from here, if I'm done debugging for the, for the time being, I would hit Shift F5. That would disconnect us from that worker process. If we make additional changes to our code, we can do a build. Either go to the Build menu or press Control Shift B. And then we can once again attach to that worker process very easily. Control, Alt, and P click W to go down to W3WP, and then attach to that process. So debugging within DNN is very easy and straightforward to do. It is very important though that you've got the environment set up in a way that I recommend, which is using dnndev.me as your local path. You can make changes to the solution. You can make changes to the project files that these templates create to use other URLs, but if you, uh, you want to make it work and not beat your head against a wall trying to figure out why it doesn't work, follow these steps. I've done this for a long time, and it's uh, highly recommended that you, you go with this approach. Again, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com, and I hope you enjoyed this video.